Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 511. The topic today is um, all in or all out. No fence sitting. And I will get into that in a moment. Before I jump in though, let me introduce myself so you know more about me and what I'm about and what these are about. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women attract, sorry, excuse me. I help strong, successful women create and find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And that's what inspired these daily talks that I've done for the last almost two years now. This is episode number 511, so quite a few. And the topic, sorry, the, 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 the title of this series is called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And the topic today is about dating relationships, which is often the case. And the topic is, and this is episode 511, if I haven't said that three times already, and the topic today is um, all in or all out, no fence sitting. And it was inspired by a meme actually, that basically you want the same ladies, you want a man who will leap over fences for you rather than a man who'll sit on the fence, not sure if he wants to be with you. So that's kind of where I'm gonna go with this and I want to make sure you get some takeaways from this because there's no point in if, if I do this without you having some value from it. And we're gonna use that lovely word commitment because that's part of what this is about obviously. In the dating arena, sometimes people take it very casually and their actual investment or involvement with dating is one of just take it or leave it. They're not really invested in what's going on. And in a way, looking at how you would go for maybe a job interview, how laid back would you be if you really wanted the job? A lot of people look at relationships as a less invested, less evolved or involved, excuse me, involved commitment. And personally, I feel this is an oversight or an undersight, depending, depending how you look at it. Relationships are something that I take seriously. That's why I coach and speak about it and I've got my second book out about it. So I do have a certain investment in this topic. If you wanna go on dates, random dates, single dates, couple of dates with people, that's great. But if you want a relationship, which is not dating, it's different. There's a deeper involvement, a deeper investment and a deeper commitment. And that's the thing about fence setting. A lot of people in relationships, I'm just feeling to gender specifics, men or women on this one. Let me just say gener generically for now. I have a feeling it's gonna split in a moment, but right now it's gener generic. That for both men and women, there is a certain hesitancy, hesitancy to commit fully to a relationship. Now, this one, I'm gonna split this up for a second. For men, we have a wiring assembly inside, so to speak, that puts us in a place where we are goal-oriented. And I've talked about this one before, so I wanna give this one a spin in this context. Actually, let me hold off on... Let me, back, let me come to that one later. This is, that's, that's, a, that's a big piece, I wanna give that one later. Let's start up first with the idea about people who want to sit on the fence because they're never willing to commit. Because for some people, this is their lifestyle preference. They'd rather stay on the fence just leading into things versus jumping fully in because they worry about making the wrong choice. Some people, just to give you some more scale scaling uh, reference, are dealing with patterns from childhood where they were made wrong a lot of times by their choices. So their ability to make choices as an adult is very limited, actually very um, Con, uh, not contained, wrong word. Their choices as adults are very tentative because as a child they were shown their choices were bad or wrong or incorrect or not approved of. So as an adult they were, they're almost afraid to make the choice because they know based on what they're raised with and what their belief system is that's all, mostly now subconscious, it's so old, it's now history, it's not even present. But making choices for them is very difficult. So that's one of the things that happens sometimes. People are unwilling to commit and make a choice to say yes for something versus no, they'd rather say, I'm not sure, because they're worried that the choice they make will be the wrong one because they were told that when they were younger. So that's one thing to take away. And if that's for, true for you, be aware of that because you may realize when you're looking at this, watching this video, that your own experience, your own reference point resonates for that. That you remember as a child, you were made wrong for your choices, in which case of making choices in the current time is hard to do. And I understand that. But if you have issues with your childhood, it's in the way of you making the right choices. If you, sorry, if you have issues as a child, 
that are making choices as an adult more challenging, you might want to get some help with that. I can help you with that. So let's jump into the piece I was going to talk about. We men, as I said, that I hinted at, <laughs> have a the ability to focus very clearly. The wiring we have inside is linear, set, linear um, direction, singular focus. That's a skill that we have, and it's also a price we pay for the way we work. Meaning that we are people who, we as men, are part of the population that to be effective has to have goals in front of us to achieve. Because what happens is we are looking for the next thing to achieve, the next goal, the next milestone, the next achievement that keeps us going where we want to go. So for some men, when they achieve a goal, they give up because they've done their job. They've gotten to the goal, like, I've achieved it, I'm there, I'm successful, and now I don't need to do anything because I've already achieved it. There's a story about how um, it was Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, I believe, in the Apollo mission when they came back to Earth, Neil Armstrong's life went somewhat downhill, Buzz Aldrin's life went somewhat uphill because at the time, Buzz Aldrin had, because when you, you know, so you've gone to the moon, it's like, what on earth is after that? You've basically done everything you can do. Nothing can go bigger than that. But for Buzz, it was an idea about setting up new goals, new milestones, and he kept going. He still is going, as far as I remember. I think he's still around. Um, but Neil Armstrong had landed on the moon. He walked to the moon. He's basically like, I'm done now. I've achieved the biggest goal, nothing else to go after this. So his life went down in quality, in experience, and in success after that, because there's nothing, nothing to go for after that. In fact, no. Was it Neil Armstrong? Or was the other one? There were three, and, and now this, uh, was it Lowell? I think it was Lowell. Excuse me, let me, let me rewrite that story, because I think I may have got my history incorrect. There are three astronauts in that mission, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong are two. There's a third one, which I don't remember, which may be the reason why I don't remember, because his life was the one that went downhill, because he had no goals afterwards. So, what's that got to do with relationships, you may be thinking? It actually explains why a lot of men have challenges in relationships because the men, myself included, have this wiring that we need to have a goal in future. Now, I talked about this before in how to make relationships work. So I'll drop it in here as well for you, for you as well. Once you're in a relationship with your partner, ladies, you're in a relationship with your man, being in that relationship is the goal accomplished for the man. So he's basically in a place where he either needs to have a new goal or he's basically done. For some men, they actually will choose another relationship because they've done their goal to get this one. It's like, okay, got that one, great. Let me go find another one. And some men do that. So just be aware of that. But one way to have your men stay connected in community relationship is to keep setting up new milestones, new goals. Now, some of those goals are um, not necessarily out loud, but they're coming along. Like you get a relationship, great. Next relationship might be moving in together or it might be having sex for the first time or it might be some other level of milestone that qualifies as the next level. It could also be something like, okay, want to get engaged or get married or have kids. These are milestones that keep the man focused in the relationship. It's an energetic. Now, I'm not saying you should have those as the big goals always in mind, but having something in alignment, it may be, okay, um, let's, have a, let's, let's go out, let's go away next weekend. That's a goal. Anything you set up, ladies, that help your man focus on the next steps, keeps the relationship interesting, keeps him focused in the relationship, and keeps things moving forward for you in your love life. And so having things that are inspiring along the way if you drop into a routine, it can get very routine. Sound, you know, as obvious as it sounds. But to keep it fresh and alive is having new goals, new intentions, new visions for the man especially. Now, ladies, your general experience in a relationship is usually an ongoing experience because you have this ability to enjoy the journey. You know, smell the roses on the road to the journey. For the men, it's like what roses? We're focused on the goal. So to notice the difference between men and women. And so in a relationship, once you do jump off the fence and you commit. There are other things to do. It's not just like, okay, jump on the fence, commit to a relationship, and you're done. Not quite so easy. There's more to it than that. So that's part of the journey that we go into in a relationship, and it's what I talked about in one of my books, about having a vision, having an intention for the relationship to go beyond what it's been before. And it's that um, renewable vision, intention down the road that keeps things fresh and alive, which is what you want if you want a healthy relationship. That's one of many, by the way. And in fact, my book... 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, by the way, has 50 principles. Although some of them are for singles, some for couples, some for men, some for women. But some of them talk about where you want to have the relationship grow into and we express into. Um, actually, I'll put the link for the book in the comments afterwards. But back to the, the initial 
topic which is about sitting on the fence for some of you as I mentioned it could be because you have a past history where um, setting up your decisions you would get slapped down because there were the wrong decisions to make or you made the wrong choice whatever that was so your ability to commit to connect and sorry your ability to commit and choose may be somewhat tied to pain and that is a big upset for a lot of people who are stuck in this this um, this framework of need to make a choice but afraid to make a choice need to make a choice but afraid to make a choice and that's the cycle people get into so that's one of the reasons why some people sit on the fence second one is um, this is true for men and women that there's a wiring inside that we want to get the best we can get and so if we get this relationship that we're now looking at it um, entertaining and having and courting we're looking around going is there anything better out there seriously some people do this where they're looking at this relationship as a achievement which there's more to go so this relationship is great but let me see them go higher and higher and higher which is not very romantic certainly and doesn't do good for you if you're the one who's chosen first and then you do it after that and of course this works both ways so excuse me the one she's chosen for you men as well both sides have this pattern within them and this style within them and it's frankly troubling because people make choices for relationship too easily sometimes so there's another part sometimes the best choice you can make is not to choose into a relationship in the first place so don't even sit on the fence get off the fence entirely the other way away from the relationship because some people relationship choosing is a I was gonna say addiction but it's a pattern of recycling a way of being that isn't the healthiest choice to make to be single versus choosing a relationship for default is actually a smarter choice even that's a harder one for some people some people are so addicted to love out there that and I talked about this over the weekend last weekend that if you stay in this framework this paradigm of next relationship next relationship next relationship you never find out who you really are on your own so sometimes sitting on the fence is a subtle hint to you that maybe you should jump off the fence the other way versus jump into the relationship so if you don't understand the difference of that to really get this um, well understanding but also feeling yourself viscerally what is your choice what is your real true calling is relationship where you want to go would you rather develop being single as a wholeness experience wholeness practice a ability to love yourself and appreciate who you are so you know what you're about because that for some people is an unknown quantity they've never done it before so sitting on the fence is a um, challenging place so my suggestion to you is three things one if you are sitting on the fence because you're scared of making a choice get help it's probably a programming piece from earlier and I can help you with that secondly if you really want to choose relationship choose fully get off the fence jump into the relationship and third if you're not sure about the relationship and you know it's not a choice point maybe it's time to be single fully embracing it owning it and living that place fully to see how it feels that's three choices you can make so if you're in that place of having decision making coming up get clear about what you want these suggestions I'm offering are my, my um, recommendations for you to consider put it that way but really relationships are important take them seriously and enjoy the hell out of them or the heaven out of them um, and for some people they're not even doing that so make sure if you're choosing a relationship you do it for the highest reasons which is for your growth because another thing about relationships in case you didn't know this one being in a relationship is not something where you sit down and relax relationships where you grow for some people that's another reason they won't commit because they're scared of the, what's in the relationship they're so tempted because it's loving and it's immersive and it's sex and all these great things but you also know the work's going to be involved and required when they get into it sometimes people are afraid to put those two together so I've given you stuff to think about I know this is just a um, a smorgasbord of fence choices <laughs> so it's been a value to you I'll put the link by the way I said I put the link in for my book into the comments also I'll put the link into my self-love practice because some people need to learn that first self-love before loving somebody else big lesson um, if you have questions or comments please reach out to me if you want some help um, if you have questions about this broadcast please put in the comments below I will post this onto YouTube and onto my podcast at some point and the links I'll give you those now is if you want to watch the replay of this well if you're watching the replay of this you're probably watching it on my business page on Facebook which is barryselby.author I do post it some other places too but it's the best place to find it 
You can also watch it on YouTube with all my other broadcasts in one playlist called Messages for the Masculine on my channel, which is Barry Selby, which is all, all my social media is Barry Selby. And please subscribe to my channel if you do watch it there. And thirdly, it will be on my podcast at some point. The audio format will be on iTunes, also under Messages for the Masculine. You can subscribe and download there. Good place to listen if you're driving somewhere and you can't watch the screen, or if you're riding a bike or exercising, whatever you're doing, you can listen to my talks that way too. That I think is that. I appreciate you watching as always. This is a funky subject, and it was actually sticking me a few points, so you may have noticed that in my talk. I hope it's been of value to you. And as always, these talks are in, meant to inspire. I'll be doing my talk tomorrow, same time, same channel. Uh, that'll be number 512. I'm not sure. But it'll be 5 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. So, I'll join, so join me then for another talk. If you want to, there should be somewhere on this screen or around the broadcast an indication we can get notified when I go live. Make sure you do that so you can watch me next time when I go live. And uh, with that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. You take care of yourselves. And uh, love yourself first fundamental way of living life. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.